Feast of Purim observance begins today. Jewish residents will celebrate Purim festival in synagogue and home. Oruchato Adonai, Eloheni Melech Uoilam, Asher Kedishuni, the mitzvoyz of Etzibuni, El Maku. As is our custom, we now read the story of Esther. In the city of Shushan, in the castle of the king, there lived a certain Jew named Mordecai. Moreover, he had brought up Hadassah, that is, Esther, his uncle's daughter. And the maiden was fair and beautiful. And it came to pass that Esther was chosen from the fairest maidens in the land by King Xerxes to be his queen. Esther's love for her foster father Mordecai was great, and it was with a heavy heart that she said farewell before retiring to the palace of the king. Cousin Mordecai, so many things have happened that I can't believe I've been chosen queen. I'm afraid... Oh, there's nothing to be afraid of, my child. As long as you obey the wishes of the king, you have nothing to fear. You are the envy of every maiden in the land. But Esther, remember you are not to make it known to anyone that you are a Jew. Come on! Keep moving! that they treat him so. He has displeased the king. What'll they do to him? Hang him. Why? His name is Aaron, a minor official who had some fancied wrong and tried to reach the king. Is it wrong to try and see the king? No, but it's the law of the kingdom that whoever comes to the king into the inner court without being summoned shall be put to death, except those to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter. But the king could have spared him if he held out the scepter. Yes, but he did not choose to do so. You can see now how important it is to obey the wishes of the king. If it were known that the queen was meeting with Mordecai, it would be very dangerous for both of us. We cannot meet here again. Yes, but if the king only knew that it was you who had brought me up, that you've been both father and mother to me, Surely he wouldn't object. But Esther, my child, it is the law. We must obey. How can I go on without seeing you? Each day after the morning meal, I shall pass your window. And although we may not talk, you can see me. And you can send messages through your servants. And should it become necessary for you to talk with me, we can meet by the... Small door in the West Garden. Your Majesty, the hour grows late. Thank you for leaving presently. Goodbye, my child. Never forget, you are now Esther the Queen. Stealing and is being taken to the judgment hall for trial. Who is accusing him? Haman. What's he done? I don't know. Let's go and find out.
Hey, Minow, what is this man accused? He has stolen 20 pieces of gold from my purse. Is this true? No, Your Excellency. I found a purse on the street. It contained 30 pieces of gold. While I counted the money, Heyman approached and claimed the purse belonged to him. I had no reason to doubt and was happy to return it to its rightful owner. Then Heyman counted the money and accused me of stealing 20 pieces of gold, claiming the purse originally contained 50. I've never stolen from anybody, Your Excellency. I'm an honest man. Your Excellency, the man lies. My purse did contain 50 pieces of gold. He admits counting the money, and he had plenty of time to conceal it. Has the man been searched? Yes, Your Excellency, but of course we found nothing. He undoubtedly passed the money to some friend in the crowd. The man is a thief, Your Excellency. All caravan guides are thieves. And a guilt is just as great whether a man steal all or part. Then, Heyman, you had no witness. That's right, Your Excellency. Then it is your word against his. Yes, Your Excellency. Inasmuch as there seems to be some doubt in this matter, I suggest we let the fates decide the issue. Bring me a bowl, if I may, Your Excellency. I shall take two pieces of paper. On one, I shall mark a cross. The other, I shall leave blank. Draw one piece of paper. If it bears the cross, you shall be punished. If it is blank, you go free. Choose. Your Excellency, one moment. Who are you and by what right do you interfere? My name is Mordecai, Your Excellency, a merchant and owner of many caravans, who appears for the accused as defender and friend. Proceed. This man is one of my trusted guides, Your Excellency. For 10 years, he has successfully guided many valuable caravans across the desert, and never have I suffered any loss. I have no reason to doubt the word of the most worthy Haman, but it is possible that he could have made a mistake. Your point is well taken, but Haman has already proposed a most unusual and equitable solution. Let us proceed. But I'm confident of the man's innocence. I'm sure In that, that case, we shall see if you are right. We'll let you decide his fate. Now let His Excellency draw the remaining paper, hold it up that all may see, and if it is marked with a cross, then the one I tore up must have been the blank. Now that Zabad has been proved innocent, there is one more thing to decide. How much money did your purse contain? You must have heard me. I said 50 pieces of gold. How much money was contained in the purse you found? Thirty. Your Excellency, it is evident that the purse that Zabad found with the thirty pieces of gold is not Haman's purse after all. We therefore request that the thirty gold pieces be held for the rightful owner. And if he cannot be found, that they be given to the poor in the name of our gracious king. A most worthy suggestion. It is so ordered. Set the prisoner free. years of trading, this is the finest piece of golden cloth I have ever seen. Queen Esther should be very pleased with such a present. Queen Esther. You know, Zabad, to all the realm, she is Esther the Queen. But to me, she is still Esther, my little girl. You love her as though she were your own daughter. Yes. I'd be very happy if you told her it was I who brought this cloth from Egypt, if she still remembers me. Esther never forgets her friends. I'll tell her. Our caravan leaves before sundown. I have many things to do. Farewell. And peace be with you.
here's your share. You better take it now. Is that all? We'll get the balance when the job is finished. Remember, there's more where that came from. Have you any definite information? Yes. I learned from the Chamberlain that the King is to take his usual walk tonight in the garden. Alone. Good. Then I'll meet you there just before dark. Well, the King is usually unarmed. But if he isn't, we'll attack so suddenly that one of us is bound to succeed. I hope the King doesn't change his mind. If he isn't alone, we'll hide our swords and wait for another night. I think it's best that we're not seen together anymore. Until tonight. of the utmost importance. It's a matter of life or death. Fortunately, sir, the Queen is in her garden, and I can give her the message without delay. I could stay, for I've missed you so. Take this. It is a present. Sebad brought it from Egypt. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you, Cousin Mordecai. Remember me to Zabed. I shall send a note at once to the Chamberlain. Bless you, my child. Lose no time. to the nearest tree. Yes, sire. Take them away. Well done, Captain. Thank you, sir. Heyman, I presume you are responsible for protecting me. What may I do to show my appreciation? For your majesty, it has ever been my pleasure to serve you, and I expect no reward for merely doing my duty. Your modesty is becoming, but I insist that you deserve a special favor. Come to me on the morrow, and I'll show you a king's gratitude. Chamberlain? will return to the palace and see that these events are immediately recorded in the great book of the realm. It shall be done at once, Your Majesty. Heyman, why didn't you tell me you were planning to rescue the king? I couldn't. Why not? Because I didn't know anything about it myself. Tonight, an attempt was made on the life of the king. Fortunately, however, we were forewarned by a note from Queen Esther. Unknown to the king, steps were taken for his protection. The culprits were apprehended, and the plan failed. By the note, it was Mordecai that sent the warning. And Mordecai is to be rewarded? Unfortunately not. Before I had an opportunity to tell the king, he assumed that his, uh, his rescue had been arranged by Haman. So, as usual, he wants to reward Haman. And Heyman had nothing to do with it. Of that, I'm sure. Although I wouldn't consider it impossible if he staged the entire affair merely to impress the king. But surely the risk was so great he wouldn't dare. I wouldn't put anything past Heyman. However, I'm confident he had nothing whatever to do with the rescue. He merely took advantage of an opportunity. Now, tomorrow, he's to receive his reward. For something that Mordecai did? Yes. I wonder what our good king would say if he knew the truth. Huh. That's something, my good friend, that you and I all have to look forward to. 
Hear what the king proclaims, that all may know how the king rewards those who are faithful to him. He hereby appoints as of this day Haman, son of Hamadatha, prime minister and ranking prince of the realm. This done by order of King Xerxes in the first month of the twelfth year of his reign. You are now second only to the king. All men throughout the realm shall bow before you. My gracious king, the honor you bestow upon me is far too great for one so unworthy. It shall ever be my greatest wish that I may follow your example and show others the same appreciation and generosity. Well spoken, Haman. You accept your responsibilities with due modesty. However, you must not forget that you at all times represent the king, and to you is due proper respect and obedience. Last night anyone told me this would happen, I would have wagered my life it wasn't possible. Surely you're favored by the gods. Remember, Joram, you're the only one that knows the truth, so be careful what you say. One cup of wine too much and so much the worse for you. Never forget that the authority of the prime minister is second only to that of the king. Your Excellency, rest assured, I value my head too much to place it in jeopardy. <laughs> that all may know how the king rewards those who are faithful to him. He hereby appoints, as of this day, Haman, son of Hamadatha, prime minister of his kingdom, and ranking prince of the realm. This done by order of King Xerxes in the first month of the twelfth year of his reign. The king wastes no time in making his proclamation known to the people. Your Excellency, The king's proclamation has been read. Who is this dog who fails to obey the king's decree? You there. Why don't you obey the king's decree and bow before the prime minister? Oh, so it's you again. Your Excellency, for I have just heard that you are entitled to be so called. I have no desire to disobey the king's decree, but my religion forbids me to bow before any person or grave an image. For I am a Jew. You may take refuge behind your religious beliefs to avoid the king's commands. But I promise you, ere long you'll bow before me or hang. Tell my wife I wish to see her at once. Your wife will be pleased at your good fortune. Since now she ranks second to the queen. No greater honor could befall your house. You seem displeased at something, Haman. Now tell me, what could mar your happiness on such a day as this? That Mordecai, that insolent Jew. I swear he'll bow before me or he'll hang. Who will bow? Everyone in the kingdom will, to you and Haman. To me. My dear, you are now standing in the presence of His Excellency, the Prime Minister, to His Majesty, the King. Oh, Joram, such nonsense. <laughs> but it's true, I tell you. Is this true, Haman? Yes. Wife of the Prime Minister. This is a time for celebration. We'll give a banquet that will never be forgotten. We'll invite all the important people. We'll... Why, this is wonderful. I'll be second to the Queen. And to think that everyone will bow before you. Not everyone. What do you mean? Everyone but the Jews. But why the Jews? Because of their religious beliefs. Can't they be punished? Surely you have the authority. Yes. Yes, I have. Especially one called Mordecai, whom I've threatened to hang. But Haman, 
It's beneath your dignity and rank to avenge yourself against one man. If all the Jews refuse to pay homage, let them all suffer. You mean kill them all? Why not? I can't hang them all. Then use the sword. That would take a special edict from the king. How would I get it? It all depends on how it's presented to the king. Speak, my friend. Is there something you want? Sire, there are certain peoples scattered abroad and dispersed among the peoples of all the provinces of your kingdoms whose laws are not like the laws of other people. It is not a good thing to leave them alone because they refuse to obey the king's laws. Who are these people? They are known as Jews, Your Majesty. What would you have me do? Well, if it would please the king, let it be proclaimed that they be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver into the hands of those who do the accounting, that they may bring it into the king's treasuries. Amen. let this be a symbol of my appreciation of your loyalty. The silver is yours and the people, to do with them as seems good to you. You will prepare a decree to read as follows. All princes, governors, and satraps of every province, greeting. It is hereby decreed that on the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar, every Jew will be slain, destroyed, and wiped out, both young and old, infants and women, in one day. And their possessions will be confiscated and taken as plunder. Signed on this 13th day of the first month by order of King Xerxes, Haman, Prime Minister. Surely there must be some mistake. What have we ever done to deserve this fate? I'll wager that Haman presented the idea to the king. There's no one else in the realm capable of such inhuman cruelty. Well, I, for one, don't intend to be slaughtered like a sheep. The least I can do is die like a man. Well, this is no time for hasty action. I'm sure that the elders will work out some kind of plan or appeal. In the meantime, pass the word to all our people to do nothing until they hear from the elders. We need advice, Sorley. Here comes Mordecai. He'll be able to counsel us. Mordecai, you were close to those in the palace. Tell us, who do you blame for this monstrous decree? I think it's Haman, but I have no proof. However, the important thing is not who started it, but how to stop it. When an edict has been signed and proclaimed throughout the land, the king will never demand it. I can't believe that such a thing will happen to our people. You'll believe it when the day comes, unless we do something to change his mind. One of us must reach the king. Yes, we all know the penalty of addressing the king without being summoned. With Haman standing by, we'd receive no mercy. It is our only chance, and one of us must try. I have a plan that might prove successful. At the moment, I simply cannot tell you what it is. Then there is hope. I can promise nothing, but I shall try. I don't know what it is you're planning, but I have faith in your good judgment. We shall wait impatiently until we hear from you. Peace be with you and with us all. Please tell us another story of the desert. They're so full of adventure, I never tire hearing of them. Perhaps you don't, or perhaps our gracious queen does. I don't mind. In fact, I rather enjoy them. Would it be wrong for me to ask how you know so much of the desert? Of course not. The tales may sound strange for a girl in my position to tell, but once there was a well-known caravan guide named Zabit who would often visit our house. He had endless tales of adventure that I'd listen to by the hour. Mistress, I see Mordecai below, and he is in mourning and wearing sackcloth. Mordecai? Sackcloth. Bring me a robe. Only a calamity would cause him to wear sackcloth. What do you suppose could have happened? Now remember, no one must know of this visit, as it would be very serious if it were known. Look 
Ty, what is it? What has happened? Why, this is monstrous. I can't believe it. Well, there it is. Signed, sealed, and sent to every corner of the realm. It's evident that our good king has been misled. This is Haman's vengeance. Well, why should Haman do such a wicked thing? Because Haman's pride and vanity have been hurt. Our people refuse to bow before him. He's even offered to pay into the king's treasuries 10,000 talents in silver for the destruction of all the Jews. Everyone? Everyone. You mean I'm in danger? Has the queen forgotten that she is a Jew? Cousin Mordecai, this is fantastic. Even if this wicked edict is carried out, they wouldn't dare harm the queen. When this edict is enforced, there will not be a Jew left alive. Haman will see to that. What can we do? We must make an appeal directly to the king. And you are the one to do it. I? Yes. The king is not unkind or unreasonable. I'm sure that he was persuaded by Haman to do this. You are the only one who might change his mind. But I wouldn't dare approach the king without permission. If I did and he failed to hold out the golden scepter... Then you would die. But if he does hold out the golden scepter, there's a chance that all of us may live. No, Cousin Mordecai... Don't but... think that you will be safe inside the royal palace. If you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will rise up from another quarter, but you and your father's house will perish. Who knows, Esther? Who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for just such a time as this? Mordecai, go gather together all the Jews that are in Shushan and fast and pray for me for three days. And I and my maidens will do likewise. And on the third day, I will go to the king. And if I perish, I perish. And if you succeed, your name will be forever remembered by a grateful people. I decree that the sum of 10,000 talents be paid to the merchants from Babylon who have this day delivered to the granaries of King Xerxes, grain and feed to the Mount Gagri too. It is indeed an excellent report. We need have no fear of famine during the coming season. Your Majesty, if I may be so humble... seen anyone come with such calm assurance. Surely you knew the penalty. Yes, my lord. But I also know the king. What is your wish, Queen Esther? What is your request? Whatever it is, it shall be granted. If it please the king, today let the king and Haman come to a banquet that I have prepared. Such a simple wish? Of course it is granted. And we accept with pleasure. I would that all my subjects were as easy to satisfy.
honor of dining with your majesty shall never be forgotten. I hope that you are right, Hale. May I compliment you on the excellence of your food? Thank you, your majesty. I hope that I can always please you as easily. You know, the queen risked her life in asking us to be here. There must be a reason. What is your petition? Whatever your request is, it shall be granted, even to the half of my kingdom. If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, then let the king and Haman come to another banquet tomorrow, which I shall prepare for them. And then I shall make known my request. We shall accept with pleasure. As Haman acknowledges the vows of the people, he sees Mordecai standing alone. Hatred for this rebellious Jew brings again his desire for revenge. Haman returns to his home, where his wife and friends gather to hear of the new honors bestowed on him by the king. He tells them he is the only man who has been permitted to dine with their majesties, and tomorrow he will go again to another banquet. Yet all this pleases him not, so long as Mordecai the Jew sits at the king's gate. Whereupon his wife suggests that he build a gallows 50 cubits high, and in the morning speak to the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. And the idea pleases Haman. That night, the building of the gallows is started, and Haman rejoices at the thought of his revenge on Mordecai, the insolent Jew. Esther's sleep is troubled by thoughts of her impending meeting with Haman and the king. And neither can the king sleep that night, because he is puzzled by the queen's request. Why did she invite Haman? Why did she ask us to another banquet? Her request must be serious, or she wouldn't have risked her life. Finally, he commands the guard to bring the great book of the realm that it might be read to him. Among the things the king hears read from the book is how Mordecai and not Haman discovered the plotters and sent the message to the queen which saved his life. Thus it is the king learns for the first time of Haman's deceit. next morning, Haman stops to admire the gallows, because he intends to ask the king's permission to hang Mordecai that day. I trust your majesty slept well? I had many things on my mind, but troubled me. Is there anything I can do to be of service to your majesty? No, I don't think so. Oh, one moment. Can you tell me where I may find a certain man named Mordecai? Why, yes, your majesty. He's well known in the palace. He can usually be found near the palace gate. Oh, your majesty. Yes? Y Haman, your prime minister, wishes an audience with your majesty. Haman? You're just in time, Haman, to help me solve a problem. I am honored if I can be of service. In my kingdom, there is a man who has done me a great service. While I know he did this without thought of reward, I shall never be happy 
until I've shown him my gratitude. What now would you suggest be done for the man whom the king delights to honor? Let the man wear royal apparel and the king's own crown and have one of your noblest princes lead him through the streets of the city on a horse and proclaim before him that this is the man the king delights to honor. It is an excellent suggestion, Haman. But uh, do you think that is sufficient? Oh, yes, Your Majesty. Very well. By the gate of the palace, you will find a man named Mordecai. It is my order that you take him and have him clothed according to your own suggestion. You will place him on a horse, and with my crown upon his head, you, my noble prince, shall lead him throughout the city, proclaiming that he is the man the king delights to honor. But your majesty, I command that this delayed honor be conferred on Mordecai at once. proclaimed that Mordecai, for an unusual service to his majesty, has been selected as the man the king delights to honor. for an unusual service to his majesty, has been selected the man the king delights to honor. responsible for saving his life that night in the garden. Oh, I see. Well, does the king know that Mordecai is a Jew? I don't think so. Well, now that he's in such high favor, the king will never allow you to hang him. Yeah, but let's not forget that by the king's edict, Mordecai and all other Jews are to die by the sword. Well, the king may change his mind. Yes, he might. Yes, he might. But once the edict is signed, it will never be changed. That's right. Your Excellency, Your Excellency. Well, what is it? Her Majesty Queen Esther has sent me to remind you that you're invited to a banquet with the King and the Queen. My compliments to Her Majesty. And you may rest assured that it would not be possible for me to forget the honor she has conferred upon me. Inform Her Majesty that I shall be there. This may be my opportunity to regain the King's pleasure. Your most gracious majesties, I propose a toast. May your reign be a long, prosperous, and happy one. An excellent toast, Haman. I observe you did not join us. Is there a reason? 
Yes, Your Majesty. I meant no discourtesy, but there is something that I have to ask of you. And when you've heard my petition, you'll understand the reason for my action. Have I Your Majesty's permission to speak? Yes, Queen Esther. What is your petition? It shall be given you even to the half of the kingdom. If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king, let my life and the life of my people be given me, for we are doomed. If we had been sold as slaves, I'd have held my peace. But the distress would not have been worthy of disturbing the king. But instead of being consigned to slavery, we have been condemned to death. I don't understand. Who are your people? And why are they to be destroyed? We are the Jews, who are to be slain by decree on the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar. And the decree was signed by no other than the prime minister of your land, Haman. But Your Majesty, I didn't know that you were... Silence! Here. And Your Majesty, it is Haman who signs a decree condemning me to death that has built a scaffold on which to hang Mordecai, the Jew who saved your life in the garden. Is this true? Yes, Your Majesty, but Mordecai refused to bow Silence. before me. I... You fool! Your Majesty! Most gracious Highness, I didn't know that you were a Jew. You must intercede with the king in my behalf. Why should I? You unfaithful wretch. You were granted the highest honors in the land. And how you have shown your gratitude. By lying about the Jews and their conduct. You persuaded the king to sign the edict that would bring death to them and their queen. And when his life was in danger, you allowed him to believe that it was you who saved him. And now I discover that Mordecai, the Jew who saved his life, is the one that you plan to hang on a special gallows which you have erected. Where is this gallows? By the palace gate, Your Majesty. You have learned how the king rewards those who are faithful to him. Now you are about to learn how the king rewards those who are unfaithful. Sire, it is my order that you and your sons be hanged this day on the gallows that you have prepared for Mordecai. Lead him away. Esther, it grieves me that I have issued the edict that will destroy your people. But I promise you, my queen, that I shall find a way to save them. And did the king keep his promise, Grandfather? He did, by sending word with special messages to all parts of the kingdom, warning the Jews to be prepared to defend themselves if they were attacked. And were they attacked? Many of them were, my boy, but they defended themselves so valiantly that their enemies were discouraged and our people were saved. Grandfather? Why do they call it the Feast of Purim? There are many explanations given, my boy, but the most common belief is that Mordecai, who succeeded Haman as Prime Minister, issued a proclamation that there should be an annual celebration for all time among the Jews, that they should make them days of feasting, gladness, and giving presents to one another and to the poor. And, Grandfather, did the king really hang Haman? Yes, he did, and on the very gallows that Haman had built for Mordecai. Throughout the centuries, there have been many who have attempted to destroy our people, but always when the hour was darkest, guiding providence came to our rescue. Just as Moses in the olden days led the children of Israel out of the wilderness, so Queen Esther, in the time of King Xerxes, saved our people from destruction.